Hello, welcome back to the Mark Janot Show, the tech show about hacking. In this video, I'm going to go over 10 math concepts that every programmer should know. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We're going dark. Number one, numeral systems. Numeral systems in programming are ways of representing numbers using different symbols and bases. The most common systems are decimal, which is base 10, binary, base 2, hexadecimal, base 16, and octo, base 8. Each system has its own set of symbols and rules for representing numbers. They are used for different purposes in programming, such as representing data, memory addresses, and byte values. The possibilities are endless, and as a programmer, you have the power to choose which system to use depending on the needs of your project. Number two, linear algebra. Linear algebra is a powerful mathematical tool used in programming to manipulate large sets of data efficiently. It helps programmers build complex algorithms for machine learning, computer graphics, and cryptography by using techniques like matrix operations, vector addition, and finding eigenvalues in eigenvectors. Linear algebra is like a set of building blocks that programmers can use to create advanced systems that can process and analyze data at scale. Number three, statistics. In programming, statistics is used in a variety of applications from fraud detection to medical research. By using st statistics to analyze and interpret data, programmers can make more informed decisions and create better systems. It's like having a detective on your team who can help you solve complex problems and uncover hidden insights. Number four, Boolean algebra. Boolean algebra is a branch of mathematics that deals with logical operations on binary variables. In simpler terms, it's a system of mathematics that helps us work with true and false values, represented as 1 and 0 respectively. In Boolean algebra, there are three key operations, AND, OR, and NOT. The AND operation is represented by a dot and takes two inputs. It outputs one only if both inputs are one. The OR operation is represented by a plus sign and it also takes two inputs. It outputs one if either one or both inputs are one. Otherwise, it outputs zero. The NOT operation is represented by a bar over a variable and it takes only one input. It outputs the opposite value of the input. If the input is one, it outputs zero. If the input is zero, it outputs one. Using these operations, we can create logical expressions that represent complex conditions. For example, the expression a and B, not A and C, means that we want to output 1 if both A and B are 1, or A is 0 and C is 1. Number 5, floating points. Floating points in programming are like scientific notation for computers. They allow for a wide range of real numbers to be represented using a base and an exponent. The base is a binary number that represents the significant digits of the number, and the exponent is an integer that represents the power of 2, to which the base is raised. Together, they create a floating point representation of the number. The representation is not always exact due to limited precision. They are commonly used for calculations in science, engineering, and graphics, but require careful consideration of potential inaccuracies in code. Number six, logarithms. Logarithms are like special tools for solving problems involving exponential growth or decay. They help to transform large numbers into smaller, more manageable uh, ones, making calculations more efficient. For example, a computer program may need to calculate the result of a complex mathematical equation that involves very large numbers. By taking the logarithm of those numbers, the program can transform them into smaller values that are easier to work with. This can be significantly reduced the processing time and memory requirements needed to complete the calculation. Number seven, set theory. Set theory deals with sets which are collections of distinct objects. In programming, set theory is used to solve programs that involve grouping or organizing data. A set can be defined as a collection of unique elements. These elements can be anything such as numbers, strings, or even other sets. In programming, set theory is used to solve problems such as searching for elements in a collection, comparing sets, and merging or splitting sets. It is often used in database management, data analysis, uh, analysis and machine learning. Number eight, combinate. We're gonna get this combinate, combinatorics. It's not gonna get me combinatorics. <laughs> Combinatorics is a magic wand for counting and arranging objects by using 
combinatorial techniques, programmers can solve problems related to probability, statistics, and optimization in a wide range of applications. For example, combinatorics can be used to generate random numbers or to analyze patterns in large data sets. Number nine, graph theory. In programming, graph theory is used to solve problems such as finding the shortest path between two nodes in a network, detecting cycles or loops in a graph, and clustering nodes into communities. Graph theory is also used in artificial intelligence and machine learning, where it can be used to model decision trees and neural networks. Once the key, uh, one of the key benefits of graph theory in programming is its ability to represent complex systems and relationships in a simple and intuitive way by using graphs to model problems. Programmers can analyze and optimize complex systems more efficiently, making graph theory an essential tool for several programming applications. Number 10 and lastly, complexity theory. Complexity theory is like having a GPS for programming. It helps you navigate the vast landscape of problems and algorithms and find the most efficient path to your destination. One of the key benefits of complexity theory in programming is its ability to identify the most efficient algo for solving a problem. The most famous problem in complexity theory, uh, theory is the P versus NP problem, which which ask whether there are problems that are easy to verify but hard to solve. If such problems exist, they are not they are considered to be class NP, while problems that can be solved efficiently are called class P. So those are the 10 concepts. I hope you enjoyed it. Is there other concepts that you feel uh, a programmer should learn or should know? Please let me know. Please hit the subscribe button. Please click the notification bell. I love you. Stay safe. See you on the next video.